attack yourself. Attack your own devices. Try to crack into your own Wi-Fi or devices that you have permission to attack. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Blake. Today we're going to be talking about Kali Linux. Yes, it's not really a Linux distribution that many people use, at least not any normal people, you know, not for a daily driver or anything, uh, but it has a place in my heart. It's near and dear, and uh, if you watch this video, you'll kind of understand why. But before we jump into that, if you do like this video, consider hitting that like button because it really helps out the channel way more than you know. Wanna be elite hackers who just watch Mr. Robot or something for the first time, and people who try to use Kali Linux as a daily driver have kind of given the distribution somewhat of a bad name. But luckily, people like that usually fall to the wayside once they realize that this art form really isn't just plug and play. Kali is extremely beneficial for penetration testers and security researchers because of the immense amount of tools that you have right at your fingertips. It's also really good if you want to learn Linux or cybersecurity. You can load it up into a VM and have at it. Just don't daily drive it. While there are a handful of uh, distributions out there that are aimed towards more the cybersecurity uh, realm of things, such as Parrot OS or even Black Arch, Kali Linux is definitely up there at number one, and I think it deserves to hold that spot. Kali Linux is, of course, a Linux distribution which is based on Debian testing, and it is designed for digital forensics and penetration testing. Now, what is penetration testing? Imagine having the coolest fucking job in the world. I'm serious. Imagine being hired, legally of course, with contracts written up, being hired to break into companies' buildings and networks. You're a paid criminal, pretty much. <laughs> so, ethical hacking and white hat hacking, people are literally paid to see if they can break into buildings, to see if they can compromise the physical structure of their building, and then also their network. Now, they pretty much go hand in hand though, because most of the time you have to gain physical access to the building in order to gain access to a company's network. Now, some penetration testers, and probably a lot of them, are proficient at both physical entrance and getting into a network, but usually you would pair up. So you've got two penetration testers, one very proficient at gaining access into the building, and then the other one, a lot more proficient at gaining access to the network. Now once they get into the building, that's when the other guy goes and searches for either a uh, ethernet connection or some kind of jack to plug into, and they can either get into the network right then and there, or they could bring along something such as uh, a LAN turtle, which is a device that you can plug in, and then you can actually leave the building and go back to, you know, your, your hotel room or your command and control center and actually hack into the network safely from a distance. Now, there's a bunch of devices out there that you can buy to do many different attacks, and this stuff is just, it's so cool and it's so interesting to me. This is the stuff that actually got me into Linux in the first place. I wanted to get into IT and cybersecurity, but then I realized there's a lot of tests that you have to take, and I'm just not the best test taker whatsoever. I'm a hands-on type of guy, you know, and even to get into, like, the lowest level IT entry position, you have to have a fucking piece of paper with words on it saying that you can do certain things. I don't know. Maybe someday. Who knows? But I'm getting off track. Once the penetration testers have a backdoor into that network, well, they need a computer and an operating system to do all of their wizardry. Now, yeah, I'm sure there are some security researchers or penetration testers out there that would just load up all of their needed tools, say, on Ubuntu or something like that. But it is also very common to just have Kali on a USB so you can plug it in and have over 600 tools right there at your disposal. So you absolutely know that you can find 
what you need and more for an engagement. Now, like I said, there are over 600 different tools that are pre-installed on Kali Linux, so you will most definitely have what you need and more for an engagement. A few of the really popular tools are Nmap, which is a network scanner, Wireshark, which is a packet analyzer which captures network packets and lets you analyze them at a very granular level. John the Ripper, which is a password cracker. You better have a good GPU. And Burp Suite, which is a very popular tool that lets you test for bugs and vulnerabilities on websites and even mobile applications. So, now that we know what Kali Linux is used for, let's take a very, very quick look at the history of Kali. Released in 2013 by Matai Aharoni and Devin Kearns, I know I butchered that name, but Matai is actually the founder of Offensive Security, which is a infosec and cybersecurity training program that you can take. You can, uh, they have exams and certifications that you can get, and uh, it's very helpful, actually. I've never taken any, because again, I'm a shit test taker, but uh, I've heard that I've heard that it's a very good program. Before it was Kali Linux, some of you may know, it was actually called Backtrack. And Backtrack was a collaboration of actually two competing distributions. One of which was called Wax, which was a Slacks-based uh, distribution, and that was also created by Matai. The second distribution, Auditor Security Collection, was created or developed by Max Moser, and it actually had around 300 different security tools for anyone to use. Now, Backtrack, just like Kali, allowed easy access to many tools that would be very helpful on an engagement. So these two developed those two distributions and eventually they came together to create Backtrack. Now Backtrack was released in 2006 until Backtrack 5 in 2012. And then in March of 2013, Kali Linux was released, version 1.0, codename Modo, and it's been going strong ever since with just uh, the version 2023.3 being released just later last month. So initially the default environment for Kali was GNOME, but then they changed it to XFCE for reasons I have no idea. I do know that the XFCE edition is the only desktop environment of Kali that will let you go into Kali Undercover, which is, albeit a very gimmicky little tool, but it actually uh, transforms the XFCE desktop environment into a Windows 10 clone. Now a lot of people don't pay attention to anything, let alone security, so I don't think anybody would really uh, notice you going all F society on their organization, but whatever, I mean, I guess you can never be too safe, right? But again, it's very, it's just a very gimmicky little thing, but it does at first glance, really just look like you're on a Windows 10 machine. Now recently, with a couple of releases back with 2023.1, uh, the Kali team actually released Kali Purple. Now, if you didn't know, in the penetration sphere, the penetration sphere, in the penetration testing sphere, there are different colored teams. Now the red team is like the offensive security, right? They're the they're the bad guys that get paid to hack and break into people's companies. Then on the other side of that, there is actually called a blue team, which is the defensive security. That is the team that is hired at the company. That's the front line of defense, right? They are the guys and girls that are trying to protect that company from the bad people. Now there's also different, like there's purple, there's a uh, yellow, I believe. There's a whole bunch of different colored teams that I'm not gonna really go into, but the biggest ones are red team and blue team. Now they actually released Cali Purple, like I said, with 2023.1, which is more of a defensive security. Pretty much all the same tools that the original Cali Linux distribution has, except for it's got a few added uh, tools in there for that are specifically pertaining to defensive security. And I get it, the colors are kind of, they're kind of confusing because if you look on the website, the original Kali is actually like blue, the color is blue, and that's for um, penetration testing and the red team side of things. So that should be technically red, but it's blue. And then Kali purple, the defensive, um, it's actually for, that would be more so for the blue team. 
I just think that like the Cali project and everybody behind it should be so proud of it because I really do think that it's a very, it's just such a cool project and that whole realm of things and cybersecurity and everything, it's just so interesting. And those guys and girls are so smart and they're, you know, a lot of them are probably very good at their job and it's just, I don't know, it's very crazy. They should be proud of the project that they maintain. Yes, my love. Now, there's also this very cool project called Cali Net Hunter, and it's basically just a port for Android devices to have a mobile Cali Linux device. Now, officially, it's just for the Google Nexus phones. I don't know if any of you even remember that phone. I remember wanting one so badly, but I was able to get what I call the light version installed on my uh, like mid-range OnePlus Android device. So there's definitely other Android devices that you can put it on. I say light because unless you have a rooted Android device, you won't be able to get all of the tools and be able to do everything that you can with NetHunter uh, with a unrooted device. But still, you can still get it installed, have the terminal, and actually have the Kali desktop and everything right there on your uh, Android phone. It was created in collaboration with uh, Offensive Security and then also a Kali community member named Binky Bear. NetHunter supports 802.11 frame injection, uh, man in the middle attacks, and so much more. It's actually a really, really cool little project. Now, I, I talk about all of this stuff, but if you're going to check any of this out and do any of it, attack yourself, attack your own devices. Try to crack into your own Wi-Fi or devices that you have permission to attack. Don't be a little asshole and try to get into your neighbor's Wi-Fi. Don't do that. This is all about ethical hacking and white hat hacking. Legal shit, okay? Seriously, if I need to put a disclaimer or something, don't be a little asshole. Don't try to hack into other people's shit without permission, all right? Just set up your own little home lab, like with a virtual machine of Windows or something, and try to break into that. Try to break into your uh, your own home Wi-Fi, things like that. Don't be a dick. Now, obviously, Kali is not your normal Linux distribution, and such, it shouldn't be used as if it was. It shouldn't be used like Fedora or Debian or Arch. It is a penetration testing Linux distribution. It is a subset of tools to use. It's not, it, it's for a specific job. It's not like you should just use it as your daily driver or anything like that. And I've seen some people try and do that. They learn about Linux or they learn about ethical hacking and stuff, which they don't even know the difference between hacking into your neighbor's Wi-Fi and ethical hacking. They learn about Kali, they try to install it, if they can even get it installed, and then they try to use it as a daily driver or something, and they don't even know how to make a new directory in their home folder. Absolutely, even if it is your first Linux distribution, just whip it up into a VM and try and use it only if you're trying to learn about cybersecurity and stuff. If you have no interest in that, go and use a different Linux distribution. There are so many better distributions out there just to use as a normal everyday distribution. The only way I could see somebody using it as a daily driver is out of pure stupidity and not having the knowledge of what kind of distribution it is, what it's used for, and the fact that there are many other distributions out there that are, uh, <laughs> that, that are a better use case for a daily driver. Kind of like myself. I say all of this because I did it myself. Now, when I first got into Linux and I first learned about Kali and I was studying about cybersecurity, I did try to use Kali Linux as a daily driver because I just didn't know, right? But luckily, I quickly learned that there are many different distributions out there and there are many distributions that are a lot better just to use as a daily driver. So I'm telling you, don't use Kali Linux as a daily driver. It just doesn't make sense. And I will literally die on that hill. It just doesn't make sense. Go use Fedora or Arch or something, you know? 
Because I promise you, if you get it installed, even if you do get it installed on bare metal and you try to use it as a daily driver, you will probably sooner than later run into some problems, especially if you don't have much experience with Linux in the first place. No matter what your thoughts on Kali are, because I know some people hate on it, because like I said, you know, a lot of uh, kids out there are script kiddies. They, they just try to dive in and they think that there's some kind of elite hacker. So depending on who you're talking to, it's kind of got a bad name sometimes. But the people that know what it's for and know how to use it know that it's a very, very strong set of tools and it's a very good Linux distribution for those particular jobs. It will always have a place in my heart because it's one of the first Linux distributions that I ever used, in a VM of course, but that's what got me into Linux because I wanted to get into cybersecurity. And once I learned about Kali, then I dove deeper into Linux and I found out about all the other distributions. And because I found out about all the other distributions, that's how I found out about the Linux community. And yes, I know I make, you know, I crack some jokes about the Linux community sometimes because it's just easy to crack jokes about us. Um, still, there are, most people in the Linux community are amazing people. They're very cool. And it's just, I don't know. I am very happy that I found Linux in the Linux community. And it all started, my journey started with Kali Linux, honestly. And yes, I know, it sounds so cringy. Why don't you fucking shed a tear or something, you fucking weirdo. But in all seriousness, I mean, if you like Linux like I do, and I'm sure you do if you're watching this video, you understand. Maybe it wasn't Kali, it probably wasn't Kali. Uh, that got you into Linux, but you understand what it's like to up or you understand what it was like to install that first Linux distribution to customize it. And now looking back on the how many years you have been using Linux, like you just you understand, right? I'm sure you understand, or maybe not. Maybe I'm just a fucking crazy guy. I don't know. But again, Kali will always have a place in my heart. It's kind of what just started my Linux journey. And that's what led me to making these Linux videos, which I really do enjoy. And I hope you're enjoying watching them. And if you did, I hope you hit that like button because it really does help out the channel way more than you know. And if you're watching and you got this far, well, are you subscribed? I know that, you know, a lot of you are, but I know that even more of you aren't subscribed. And come on, man. Just, you know, hit that subscribe button for Linux love. Linux love, man. Linux is life. No, God, I gotta cut that out of there. Seriously, hit that subscribe button because we have a bunch more content coming your way.